Hi there and welcome to the channel. So it's an exciting day here down in my uh, growing room because it is time to start planting tomatoes uh, indoors, getting them ready for the outdoor garden. So I think starting tomatoes indoors is one of my favorite uh, indoor starts. I find that they are one of the easiest things to, to get growing indoors. So this year I am going to do things a little differently. Uh, first of all, I'm going to try a different method of uh, starting these tomatoes. And this is something that I seen uh, done on a channel called uh, Next Level Gardening. So Brian is the um, host of that channel. He is down in Southern California, which is a, a very different growing zone than here on Saskatchewan prairies. I'm sure his zone must be around eight or nine. Um, of course, here in Saskatchewan, we are in zone three, which is a very cold growing zone. But a lot of the, the methods that Brian shows on his channel, you know, work in, in various growing zones. And I was really interested about this technique that he showed on uh, how to start tomatoes and create a very strong tomato with very strong roots um, that hopefully will give you um, a better harvest at the end of the day. So that's one thing different that I'm going to be doing this year. Another thing that I'm going to try doing this year is starting less tomatoes. I always find that, you know, you... If I start them in smaller cells, I'll have like six of one kind, six of another kind, six of another kind, just because you're not sure which ones will germinate. And then you have really good germination and they grow well and you just, you know, don't end up getting rid of any and you plant them all up into bigger containers. And, you know, six to eight, eight weeks later, your whole countertop in the garage is covered with tomatoes plus all the other vegetables and flowers that I like to start indoors. So I've told myself this year that I'm going to limit the amount of each variety that I'm going to start, but I do have seven different varieties that I want to try this year. So I'm going to be just starting two seeds of each variety in these red solo cups. So that means I only have seven starts going here. And my hope is that these tomato plants can stay in these red solo cups right from the time they uh, sprout until they are ready to go out in the garden. So looking at it this way, if all goes well and I get seven plants going, this is the only space that they're going to take up. So getting back to this technique that Brian uh, talks about on his channel, it is all about starting your tomato in a uh, solo cup like this or a container uh, similar to this size. It could be like a, a four inch uh, container. And what he does is he only fills the container up about halfway, plants the seeds and lets the tomato germinate and grow. And as it grows, just to keep adding soil around the the uh, stem of the tomato and the reason for that is because tomatoes as long as you bury their stem all those little tiny hairs that I will show you up close here in a minute will turn into roots so the theory behind this is as the tomato grows we keep covering the stem it shoots out more roots so by the time this is ready to go into the ground you have a very solid root ball on uh, a very strong plant and hopefully we'll have a very good harvest at the end of the season. So here on the Saskatchewan prairies we have a very short outdoor growing season that is usually approximately 110 days from in between the two frost dates. So tomatoes are one of those things that you have to start indoors. There's just no way you would ever be able to start them outdoors and I usually do them about six to eight weeks prior to the last frost date. Here our last frost date is about the third week of May. And for tomatoes, I personally usually wait a little bit longer than that last frost date and go with pretty much the first week of June. I've had a lot of uh, experience with late frosts coming at the end of May, early June. 
So I consider myself just a small scale gardener. I don't grow uh, a huge amount of any type of vegetable for the purpose of canning or um, saving it for the winter. Being that I work full time and have other hobbies that I enjoy doing, I try not to grow too much of anything. I want to be able to just enjoy it throughout the summer and into the fall. And any tomatoes that I do end up with at the end of the season that doesn't look like we're gonna be able to eat fresh, you know, I will do some freezing. But uh, for the most part, I just like to grow different varieties I like the cherry type tomatoes, I like the beef steaks, and um, I have been very lucky to get a whole bunch of different kinds of tomato seeds through a seed exchange here in Canada, and I'm pretty excited to try all of these and see how they turn out. And because we do have a short growing season here, it's always good to try and find tomatoes that have a shorter growing period, such as this one here. This is called the Roadster Tomato. But I received this from uh, Dean Scott Birchwood Builders. It's his YouTube channel. He's in Alberta. He sent these to me. They are a large, meaty, flavorful, determinant tomato. So when I looked them up online, they're kind of a bigger one. It's a nice slicing tomato. It'd be great for sandwiches. And these have a 65 days to maturity. So what that means is when these get transplanted into the ground, you should have um, tomatoes 65 days later. So if I get these into the ground uh, early June, that means that I should have some tomatoes before the end of July. Hickory Croft Farms is another YouTube channel that I do a lot of seed exchanging with. They are located in Ontario and they have sent me three different kinds of uh, tomato seeds that I'm excited to try. This one's called the Palestinian tomato. It has a, a longer maturity date. So it says um, 85 to 100 days. So that, that is really uh, pushing it for Saskatchewan. Um, so it will be interesting to see if I can get some of these. These are also a beefsteak tomato, but they are an indeterminate variety, which means that they will keep growing and producing all summer long until, until they die or um, usually till the frost comes. The other one that they gave me was a white Thomasol tomato, which again was a very interesting looking tomato to me. It is also a uh, indeterminate variety. It has a long maturity date as well of 80 days. So we will see how those go. I also got a bush beefsteak determinant from uh, Plowman's Backyard YouTube channel. Check it out. So this is a determinant short season type tomato. So I like that. It's only 62 days to maturity. So the determinant tomatoes will only grow so high, usually about three or four feet tall. They will bloom, produce their fruit, and then they're done. This is one I'm very excited about because I love sun gold cherry tomatoes. And I got these also from Dean at Birchwood Builders. He sent me some of those after I was asking for them on a seed exchange video. They have a short growing season of 60 to 65 days. And he wrote on here that they are yellow, sweet, juicy, and you can't eat just one. So looking forward to those. This is from Heritage Harvest Seeds. They are located in Manitoba. And this is called a pink ping pong tomato. So it is an indeterminate cherry tomato. It's got a 75 day to maturity period. So should see something from these, you know, early August. This one doesn't really uh, qualify as a tomato, but I'm gonna be planting it with my tomatoes anyway. Another one from Hickory Croft Farms, it's Aunt Molly's ground cherries. These kind of interest me. I've seen a lot of videos of people growing them. I've seen a lot of mixed reviews from people as to whether they like them or not, but just a very interesting looking plant that I'm gonna try growing and we will see how they go. So these are 70 days to maturity from transplant. So we will add this to my variety here today. So I think I have a good variety. I have a few determinant type. I have a few that will be the larger uh, beefsteak kind of tomato. 
and I also have a couple of the cherry varieties so I'm very excited to get them planted here and show you my method that I'm going to be following. So I think because I'm only going to be starting one of each of these containers I'm going to be putting three seeds into each just to ensure that I have successful germination. I'm trying to just plant them close to the center here because I know I'm only going to be keeping one in here. Something that uh, Brian also on his video that I was watching used instead of putting some more uh, seed starting mix on the top of the soil he used vermiculite which I have been doing for uh, um, my other indoor starts. The vermiculite is supposed to help prevent um, damping off and uh, fungus gnats getting into your soil here. So with my seed starting mix here I also add boiling water to it to moisten the soil and to kind of give it a bit of extra sterilization to prevent uh, fungus gnats in case there happens to be some eggs in the soil. It's just a little extra measure I like to use just to help prevent the, the fungus gnats getting into your dirt in your house which is a can be a real pain. So this is how it's going to look after the initial planting. So I have put three seeds in there, put a light layer of vermiculite on the top. With these red solo cups I've just taken scissors and made a few little slits at the bottom so that it has drainage and somewhere for the roots to go because I'm pretty sure by the time these are ready to go outdoors they're going to have roots shooting out the bottom. So here's what the beefsteak tomato looks like about I think it's been almost a month since I planted these. So I had the cup filled halfway, planted them up and now to take advantage of this special thing that tomatoes have. If you can see all those tiny little fibers that are on the stem of a tomato those will turn into roots if you cover them with soil. So this is the um, technique that we are going to use today. I'm going to remove those first two leaves and this one as well and this one here. So it doesn't look like you're left with much but once we top it up with soil right up to here all these tiny little fibers that you can see are going to turn into roots and this will keep growing upwards. So then by the time we have this in the garden this is going to be a really nice strong tomato plant. So this is what he looks like once he's got another layer of soil. He's still got a lot of nice leaves here growing and as I said this stem that we just covered up will shoot out a bunch more roots. So I'm just going to put this back under the grow lights. So one thing that I just got thinking about with these uh, ground cherries is that they don't have the same uh, special properties that the tomatoes have where their stems um, will shoot out roots if you bury them. At least not that I uh, read anywhere. So I'm going to fill this container up all the way. Just put about four or five seeds. Like I said I don't have a lot of knowledge of ground cherries, just a few uh, YouTube videos I watched. I would love to hear anybody's comments on their experiences with these. Like I said I it seems like a really mixed reviews on whether people like them or not. So to start these off I'm going to be using this heat mat. Um, it's not totally necessary to use one but if you have one it's a good, a good way to, to help kind of jump start the uh, this germination. I'm going to put these cups directly onto the mat for now and just keep them moist by spritzing the tops of them. And I do have a container all ready to uh, put these into once they get sprouting and I have them under the lights that I can bottom water them directly into this tray. So I'm not going to have a grow light going on them right now until they germinate. 
And if you have some kind of a dome type thing that you can use, um, I always just use a plastic bag because it's easy to maneuver and fit over any sizes of cups that I am working on here. So I'm just going to keep the plastic on here till I start seeing germination, which according to most of these packages is within seven to 10 days. I have found with tomatoes that I've growing indoors that they do germinate a lot uh, quicker than that. Sometimes within four days I see germination. So once I have uh, germination happening on all of these, I will take off the plastic and turn on the grow light, maybe move them up a little bit closer. So we'll just keep monitoring that. So that's pretty much all there is to starting tomatoes indoors. And I will be starting a lot more things over the next few weeks as we get closer to that last, last frost date. So I hope you will keep watching. If you haven't already done so, please hit subscribe and uh, leave a comment. I will be doing all sorts of updates on everything that I've started so far. And I hope that you will just keep following along with me on my channel. Thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next one.